All right, today we're gonna take a look at the curious case of a pendulum which is in an elevator. And I'm gonna explain how to calculate the period of that pendulum. Now I'm gonna work this problem as though the elevator is accelerating upwards, but the reality is this solution will work whether the elevator is accelerating up or down. Now this problem typically shows up in introductory high school physics courses. The issue is, you see a lot of people try to explain this problem, talking about accelerated reference frames and second derivatives of position with respect to time, which frankly have absolutely no place in a high school physics course. So let's approach this from a different perspective and try to just get at very basically what's happening in this problem. You see a pendulum, which isn't in an elevator, but rather attached to a stationary point, has a period which is given by t equals two pi times the square root of L over G, where L is the length of the string connected to the pendulum and G is the acceleration due to gravity. Now realize this period equation applies to our pendulum in the elevator so long as the elevator isn't accelerating. That is to say, if the elevator's moving up at a constant speed or is stationary, this equation's still gonna apply. But as soon as we allow this elevator to accelerate, either up or down, we need to make some changes to this equation. And more specifically, we need to make some changes to this acceleration due to gravity term. And that may seem weird because regardless of what the elevator is doing, the acceleration due to gravity, provided this elevator's on Earth, is always gonna be 9.81. But to understand the changes that need to be made to this equation, let's take and put a person inside this elevator. And let's make this a little ridiculous. Let's say this person lives inside this elevator, which is always accelerating up. You see, this person, they wouldn't think the acceleration due to gravity was G or 9.81. They would actually think it was more. I mean, if this person was to take and drop a ball, they wouldn't see that ball accelerate downward at G or 9.81 meters per second squared. This ball would actually accelerate downward at G plus whatever the rate of acceleration, I'm gonna call that A, of the elevator. Now it might seem ridiculous that this person is doing science experiments inside an elevator, but hey folks, they're trapped in an elevator. They don't have a whole lot else to do. And besides, they've already got a pendulum swinging back and forth. We're not gonna think they're any weirder for dropping a ball. But the point is, for this person and everything inside the elevator, the acceleration due to gravity or free fall acceleration appears to not be G, but rather G plus the upward acceleration of the elevator. And that includes our pendulum. So what that means is the period of the pendulum is gonna be given by two pi times the square root of L over G plus A, which is actually a relatively simple result. The only real way to screw this up is to put the wrong sign in for A. You see, A needs to be a positive value if the elevator is accelerating upward, and A should be negative if A is downward. Now this equation tells us about the period of the pendulum inside our accelerating elevator but it doesn't really tell us why this pendulum goes back and forth faster or slower. Now to understand that, I wanna to turn to a free body diagram showing all the forces acting on this pendulum. You see, there's two forces acting on this pendulum. The first being the tension in this string and the second being gravity. Now, if our elevator isn't accelerating, vertically, these two forces cancel each other out and it's the horizontal component of tension that causes this pendulum to swing back towards what we call equilibrium. And really all that happens when we make this elevator accelerate upward is this tension in the string grows larger, causing the ball to accelerate upward along with the elevator. But because that tension is greater, the horizontal component of tension, which is what we refer to as the restoring force, pulling the pendulum back to equilibrium, is gonna grow just as the tension grows. And if that restoring force grows, the pendulum is gonna be pulled back towards equilibrium more quickly, causing the pendulum to oscillate back and forth faster. Or to go back to our equation, if the elevator accelerates upward, the period of the pendulum, or the time it takes to swing back and forth, is gonna decrease. And one last thing, when you're plugging in G or 9.8 into either of these equations, that 9.8 needs to go in as a positive value. I mean, imagine right here, I stuck a negative in here. It's gonna kick out an imaginary number for period. And well, obviously we don't want that. So it's a little bit strange because even though the acceleration due to gravity is downward, 
and typically we say that's negative, we put in a positive value for g here. And the reason people mess that up is because of this issue here. This value is positive if the acceleration is up and negative if the acceleration is down. And those signs seem to be contrary to one another. Again, this goes back to the acceleration due to gravity that our little elevator dwelling person feels inside the elevator. When it's accelerating up, they feel more gravity. When it's accelerating downward, they feel less. So next time you get on an elevator, I want you to think about how the period of that pendulum would change as that elevator accelerates. And on that note, that's all for now.